God, what is going on? Did you see an error on your end or no? Yes, it said it can't access the video. That's what it's it for me too, but I'm thinking it's You're good frozen. now. You're frozen. But can you hear me? I can hear you, but your face is all blurry. Welcome to the final episode of this season for Krishan and Kathy, Kansas City Real Estate. We'll be taking a break after this episode and coming back first of the year. But we wanted to talk this episode about goals. Goal setting, it's a great time now with people thinking about their goals and wanting to set goals for the new year. You know, we want to have a little discussion about how we set our goals and, you know, achieve them and things like that. So, Kathy, how how have you, how has your approach to setting your goals and achieving them, how has that changed over the years since you've been in real estate for a long time and really just in life? Always trying to improve, obviously. Yeah. And, um, I have not found the perfect solution by any means, but I have improved is I've identified certain personal goals that I am reaching now, which is many years in coming. And then, the, and that one is just simply weight loss. So mm -hmm. I identified what the problem is or was and what I'm doing to actively modify those behaviors to get to my goal. Now, as far as work goes, it also has taken me many years. I was just one of those, I call it lucky people that people had um, confidence in me and some, how for some reason, even when I just first started the business, they felt like I knew what I was doing, even though I didn't. I carried around two thick four inch ring notebooks with me everywhere I went in case there was a question, I could look it up. <laughs> and so um, it was craziness, but I was sincere in wanting to do a good job for them. And so people just came to me. And then I realized I can't just rely on people calling me to always get business. So. I ended up, um, and I'm evolving still, and we're working with one another actually to develop um, a better way of contacting people, staying in touch with people. That's yeah. the biggest thing. And my, um, and I don't want to lose um, touch with people because first of all, I like them. Second of all, I just want to be there when they need or they have a question about real estate. Yeah. So for me, I would say. There's two kind of answers to this question as far as how I've um, changed my approach to both setting and achieving goals. So one is, I think I'm a, I'm a very numbers person. You kind of know that. So I, I thrive off of like number goals. Like I want to hit this many houses. I want to make this much money. I want to, you know, do whatever. And I what I've learned, especially in real estate, is that that isn't really enough to push me. And so a lot of my goals right now are around like my life. So things I want to do, like I want to buy a house or I want to travel to these places or, you know, things like that. And when I set those goals on what I want for my life to look like, and then I set financial goals in real estate based off what I need for that to happen, I'm a lot more motivated to really make the goals happen. And I think as far as achieving the goals, um, I feel like I never was really a good planner. I felt like I was just going to set the goals and somehow they were going to happen. Things were going to kind of just fall into place. And over the last two years, I've been really good at, you know, breaking down the goal. Okay. So I want to sell this many houses. Okay. I need to do this, this much, this quarter, this much, that quarter. And how am I going to find these people that are going to need to buy and sell real estate? How am I going to be valuable to them? You know, really breaking it down and making a plan, even though they change all the time. Cause I, like I make plans and then, probably two months in, three months in, I changed the plan. But I think just having a plan, that helps me a lot with, you know, making sure that I'm doing the right things to hit the goals. And I think what you're saying basically is what I call it as awareness factor mm -hmm. is because we can go through the motions, but if we're not aware of the numbers and what we're actually doing, we really don't know what's going on. We're going by gut, but they yeah. have a tendency to keep things in black and white and talk the truth. So yeah. <laughs> I can live in my wonderland, like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, but what am I going to do to get there? Yeah. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So what, so what do you think in, it, like inspires you to hit higher goals or want to set higher goals? And how do you deal with the tough times when it's maybe harder to hit those goals? Well, with, for me, I have to, um, just keep in mind that I have X amount of money I need per month mm -hmm. for personal expenses. And then also I don't want to just always be um, 
basically hand to mouth day to day, year after year, the same kind of thing. Because unexpected expenses come up. Sometimes some travel has come up that I didn't anticipate happening, and it did mm -hmm. um, because of a family need or whatever. And so um, what I really try to do is excel and go beyond what I'm doing currently. Mm -hmm. And I need to increase what I'm doing currently by at least 30 or 40% so I can have more of a cushion. And someday people look at me and they say, what are you retiring? <laughs> I don't have any plans to retire. So right. the thing is, I want to keep going. I enjoy the business, but I don't want the daily stress that I sometimes have. Yeah. So that keeps me going. Yeah. I think for me, so, you know, I'm very inspired by the life that I want to live. And I think what, what inspires me to set higher goals is just kind of knowing what I've been able to do. So like knowing that I was able to increase my sales a lot this year and I was able to increase them even last year for my first year, I was able to increase them a lot. And so seeing that growth, a lot of times I feel like we underestimate ourselves and what we can really do. Um, and I think really being able to see what I've been able to do is like, okay, if I can do this once, if I can double my business in one year, why can't I do it again the next year? Um, cause sometimes I do stop myself and think, is that too unrealistic of a goal? And then I think, wait, I did it once I can do it again, or at least I can try. Um, and as long as I'm growing, you know, it's not the end of the world if I don't hit the goal, but it's good to strive towards something. Well, I think that's why we work well together. We sort of boost each other up and we can spar with each other about different ideas, what works and what doesn't work. And mm -hmm. it helps keep uh, me motivated to try to stay up with you and maybe yeah. vice versa. So yeah. <laughs> We challenge each other in a positive way. Definitely. And I, I look to you and I think like, you know, obviously no business is perfect, but you've built relationships with so many people that create referrals that come to you. And so that's kind of my model of what I want, you know, my life to look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now is that I've built all these great relationships with people and that now I have people who are close friends, past clients that trust me and they refer me to business over and over again, like you've been able to build. Well, and sometimes, you know, I get these phone calls from people and it's not necessarily that they want to list their house or buy a house, but they call me as a resource for information. Yeah. And what do they need to do? Who should they call? And what do I think about? Like just today, somebody called me about insurance issues. They are having trouble with their insurance company. So we mm -hmm. talked about some of the trends nationwide about insurance and what things to look for and to be aware of from older homes to newer homes. So, and geographic locations. So it's, I feel it's good. I can be an information source and maybe those people will continue to look at me for as a valuable tool to help them eventually sell or buy more. Yeah. And if they know anyone they're you know, you're their trusted expert in their head that they're going to think of too. Which hopefully, is great. hopefully. But yeah. in the meantime, I make a lot of nice acquaintances <laughs> for keep relationships going. Yeah, definitely. So keeping our topic on goals, how do you reward yourself when you're reaching those short-term goals and those long-term goals? That's the hardest thing for me. I seem to take a back seat for everybody else's goals, my mm -hmm. clients especially. Yeah. And, um, I haven't, I don't have a really good idea for goals for myself. I mean, I don't want to go out and eat a big dinner. I don't want to go get drunk. You know, I just, yeah. I, I just, I think peace of mind is my biggest goal. So yeah. I am on target. So I think there's kind of two answers for me. So one, for it's pretty easy for me to reward myself, actually. It's really, and I try not to overspend on that reward i fall into that trap a lot of like I've, I've had a great year let's you know let's do something crazy like let's you know spend a thousand dollars on a vacation that maybe i didn't plan and didn't want to do but i was like why not um and but a lot of my goals are around my life and then so me hitting the goals means i get whatever that is so that kind of already happens organically um, which is great because it's not like I'm overspending or doing anything impulsively. It's like I really planned for this to happen. And now I'm getting that reward for meeting the goals. And your big goal, biggest goal ever is buying a new home. Yeah. You're going to, and I've been thinking to myself, what are you going to do for furniture? What are you going to do for kitchen supplies? And <laughs> me who has probably too much, I'm thinking, well, maybe I can give you things or maybe I can help 
route you to the best way. Not that you don't have family to help you. Actually, the crazy part is I actually have a lot of stuff already because when I went to college, I had like a um, like a going away party with people oh. got me like furniture and pots and pans and all kinds of stuff, like way more stuff than I would have ever needed. And I'm like the bridal shower, <laughs> exactly. And I've just been keeping this stuff like in a closet um, yeah. for like forever. And so when I get to I actually like open this stuff and start using it. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, yeah, I have like, everything, you think of, especially for a kitchen. I have like everything. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, if you need something, let me know. Or let everybody know that's listening. <laughs> yeah. We'll make you a gift list somewhere. Yeah. Well, this has been a great episode. Um, I'm glad that we kind of cut it down to a short period of time. And I want to take a few minutes to say that, you know, setting goals is so important and having a plan towards those goals is so important. And so now's the time where if you are wanting to buy a house, if you're wanting to sell a house next year, um, even if it's going to be in the fall and the winter of next year, it's a really good time to meet with me or meet with Kathy and not only let us know what your goals are, figure out if they're realistic or not, but then make those plans, figure out, you know, what do I need my credit score to look like to buy a house? What do I need my savings to look like? What do I need to be doing in my home in terms of repairs and improvements to sell it? All that kind of stuff. Well, and I will say that we are both great, even though we can't always identify our own goals real well, in black and white. I yeah. think we're excellent about working with other people to help them establish where do they stand in the buying selling process, what will help them the best and put their goals on paper so they can reach them so we can help them reach them. Yeah. And I think what clients love about us is one, I think we're very, we're very honest and we'll tell them, you know, that may not be realistic right now. And this is what you can do right now, or this is what you need to be able to make something like that happen. And I think, you know, we really, really care about our clients. Like we're super passionate about the goals. And so we are going to give our, you know, 200% when it comes to our clients meeting our goals, whether it's trying to get them in that new house by selling the old one or getting them in their first house. You know, we are absolutely committed, sometimes more than our clients are, to helping them achieve their goals. Right. And it actually, it may not be a good trait, but I think we both put our clients above ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> They're um, foremost in our minds not just who we're going to go out with tonight or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're on yeah, target. I think the time I've gotten used to us, you know, stopping and answering the phone or answering emails because we really just care that much. Right. Right. And we want to give them our full attention. Yeah. So with that, I love working with you, Krishan. I hope everybody that listens likes to listen to us and. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a great season. First season of the podcast. With many more to come. We'll be back um, early next year. Um, and everyone, go ahead and you know subscribe, like the podcast, send us any feedback so we can get ready for next season. Perfect. Thank you, Krishan, for everything. And everybody that's listening, thank you. Bye.